Welcome in today's video, I'm going to show you how to deal with one of the most difficult problems to troubleshoot, which is an air fault. So first of all, um, what you need to know about an air fault, what is, how is, how is this, how is this um, fault building, where is it coming from and what might be potential what might be potentially causing it. So first of all, um, the, typical, the typical air fault, um, which is on a loop uh, in a fire alarm system, is caused when uh, you have the, your wire. This is your, um, this is your fire alarm wire. Um, inside of the wire, we have three cords. And now an air fault is when one of those paws or neg wires is touching an earth, is making a contact somewhere in some point, might be panel in a circuit board, or might be in the in one of the devices on the loop, but I will get to that point in a minute. So now, if you know what is an air fault, you need to know how to troubleshoot this problem. Now, first of all, um, you need to know that sometimes an air fault is not always on the loop. It might be caused by the fire alarm panel itself, uh, might be caused by the, by, by the wiring inside of the panel, uh, might be caused by, by one of the devices on the loop, might be caused by faulty wire or trapped wire or damaged wire and potentially might be caused by the mains, the fuse pair, whatever is your panel connected to um, or taking the power from. Um, now, the first step, what you want to do is eliminate the easiest to find problems, which is a fuse pair. To eliminate the fuse pair on your, on your fire alarm, um, you want to probably replace the fuse pair, which is quite something quite easy to do um, if you have accurate qualifications to do that. Um, if not, you might want to ask uh, the electrician or might be worth to power down the system and leave it on the batteries and see if the air fault remains. Now, your meter in this case will be the panel. Panel is indicating um, if you found it or not. Um, you're not gonna be using the multimeter for it because in this particular case, best measuring device will be the fire alarm panel itself. Now, if you eliminate the fuse pair and you know that the fuse pair is okay, uh, the second potential problem might be with the motherboard, uh, which also happened to me, but this is probably the last thing you're gonna check uh, because obviously the motherboard is gonna be something uh, something difficult to to replace on being on site another thing you're checking is um, is a loop um, so to check if your loop isn't causing a um, air fault on your system uh, you will have to disconnect one loop for example you're disconnecting the first loop and then you're checking if the uh, air fault remains and that way you check in all of your loops one by one and if, if for example uh, the second loop you disconnect um, and then therefore disappeared um, and you're thinking all right that's the loop where the where, where potentially my airfall is um, uh, the first thing to check uh, before you start running along the side and uh, looking for the problem along the loop uh, will be um, your loop card so um, to, in order to check if uh, your loop card is not causing a, um, an air fault, uh, you're gonna have to have your backup uh, downloaded to, to your laptop um, just to be safe because you're gonna have to power down the system. Then you will have to swap the loop card with the other loop and power down the system and see uh, if that loop, if that uh, air fault still remains on the on the same um, loop. So you're powering your system back, then you need to connect the same loop. If the air faults still remain on the system, that means that's the, that's the loop card. If the air fault again disappears, that means uh, you have the true air fault sitting on the loop. To troubleshoot your loop, you want to um, go to roughly in the middle of the loop, just roughly. Uh, you can basically uh, check the configuration in your laptop and uh, try to find uh, like a middle point of the loop um, and split the loop on the half. And now you're coming back into back to the panel and you are uh, connecting your one side of the loop back and uh, you see if the uh, which of the sides is causing that 
um, that problem. If you will find that the, let's say, I don't know, the, um, the left side or however you want to call it is causing that problem, uh, you are going um, to split this left side of the loop on the half again and see if that problem remains. And that way, uh, by splitting and uh, and connecting uh, to the panel, you will be able to find the rough, roughly the point on the loop where this um, air fault might be. Uh, once you get to um, specific uh, specific part of the loop uh, where you think your air fault might be, you might be you might want to replace the devices or one of the devices and come back to the panel and see if the air fault. Air Force still remains. Also, uh, sometimes uh, you might want to run just this one bit of the wire between the between the devices um, and see if the Air Force remains. And this is the way of troubleshooting um, the Air Force on the loop. And as I said on the, on the beginning, this is one of the most difficult problems to troubleshoot on the fire alarm systems. It is because it's just, uh, as you can imagine, it's taking uh, lots of time. Um, now, if you don't have an air fault on the loop, like if you disconnect all of the, the loops and the air fault, air fault still remains, uh, it is likely to be on the motherboard on the fire alarm system. And that's what happened to me um, once so far during my, uh, my uh, six years experience in this industry. Um, in this case, you might want to um, replace the motherboard. Um, and this is how you basically um, troubleshooting the air fault. Now, practically, what might happen to you is that um, air fault is building very slowly, and it happened to me also in the past. Um, uh, so this particular fault might cost you a couple of visits on site because um, you're disconnecting something, you're connecting back, uh, back, uh, back in, and the air fault disappeared and is not and is not uh, coming back within like let's say 10, even 20 minutes, even half an hour sometimes. And you're leaving the site and you're getting a phone call that uh, the air fault came back onto the onto the um, system. Um, this is that, that's why I that's why I said um, it is one of the most um, difficult problems to deal with and uh, sometimes it might cost you a couple of visits. And the couple, there is a couple of things you, you might want you might need to remember. Um, the first one is that you need to be patient and um, write everything down step by step, what side of the loop you was disconnecting, what you've eliminated so far, etc, etc. Because uh, I'm telling you this just from the experience of mine, um, you, you, will, you will forget within a couple of minutes, especially once you're stressing, once you're running uh, like uh, all over the place to, to find out what the actual fault is. <clears throat> so write everything down, what, you, what you've eliminated so far, where are you, in what, point of your uh, troubleshooting process you are. The second thing is uh, it, it, you might want to have someone to help you um, because this, that's going to be involving, especially when the site is big, that, would, that will involve uh, you running um, from the loop to the panel, etc. So it is very helpful to have um, additional, pa additional pair of hands to help you on site. Um, typically, this is the problem uh, troubleshoot by uh, two people, and that that that's it. I wish you you're not gonna have this um, too often. And um, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. If you found this video useful, or maybe you've learned something from it, please consider to subscribe and give it a thumbs up, or leave the comment down below, and it will help positioning this video along the YouTube which will be beneficial for entire community. Thank you.